in-game chat bans going down right now. It looks like Teemo and Kha'Zix are going to be the first ones. Teemo, global map presence because Noxious Traps, does a lot of magic damage, brings a blind to the table. Also a fast character. Great champion. Then we have Kha'Zix. Kha'Zix is a character who has good mobility because of Evolve Wings. Evolve Wings lets him jump over walls that other characters cannot. Plus, the single target damage is extremely good. Kassadin, the best mobility in the game because of Rift Walk. Very high damage output. His silence duration is so long. And then Rammus. Rammus is a mobile tank that brings a lot of crowd control to the table. And for those of you not familiar, uh, Team Murka Murka is the team on the left. That is Man Man's team. Uh, nice to see them out competing again. And on the other side, we have the team Butt Trumpet. We're going to have six more bands. We do ten bands in this format here in the Dominate Dominion Tournament. Looks like Lulu is going to be banned. A curious thing about Lulu. We talk about Lulu being uh, extremely strong potentially even overpowered. I started going through the screenshots at the request of High Peoples, and I have found that while the mic has a 100% win rate with Lulu so far, all of the other combined appearances of Lulu, if you take the mic away from the equation, Lulu as a champion only has a 50% win rate. Unless Lulu plays it. Then it changes it. It's very interesting. What? I, oh, hi. Oh, yeah. Hey, look, guys. Rheingold. I'm going to bring her into the uh, the call here. Come on. Buttons. How do they work? Buttons. No, not that button. Not that. Where's my... There we go. I got the thingamajigs. There's the summoner blockers, guys. It's not quite the blocker apocalypse but it is still some summoner blockers. Okay. It's gonna make a noise. Sorry, SS Trippy. I, uh, I'm working off one monitor today. Hello. So. Hello, Ron Gold River. It's nice to meet you. You too. All right, let's do this. It's gonna get dunned. That's not a word, but you guys hopefully know what I mean. Uh, let's go through the rest of the bands real quick. Uh, Heimer, Wukong, Jace, Fizz, Mash G. Uh, Mash G's does a lot of damage. Jace's poke is great. Heimer Deer can set up shop on a turret and just do a lot of damage. Uh, Fizz? His burst is really, really high. Well, it's gonna be... There's a lot more we can say about him, actually. I have an hour and a half worth of stuff to say about him, but I'll spare you. And then Wukong, his initiation is great, plus armor reduction is nice, too. So, to the picks, though. Jarvan, J4. Uh, Jarman to Emperor of Demacia, whatever you want to refer to him as. Line Effect AoE Airborne is great, his damage is good, brings a slow to the table as well, and Cataclysm is one of the more unique abilities in the game, it's really great for forcing positioning. Over on the other side, we are seeing Lee Sin and Nidalee. And Nidalee has one of the most powerful abilities to poke in the entire game. She gives sustain to her team as well with her... her? I know this trick, guys. Click on the thing. I'm her her primal, primal surge. surge. Oh my god, it took me longer than it took you. Oh no. And I looked it up even. What? Oh dear. So yeah, primal surge gives sustain to the team. Her poke is amazing as well. She's good at finishing off champions. She's good at delaying. Lee Sin. Lee Sin's a great brawler. You can see him bottom lane or up in the top lane as well. And looks like on the other side we're seeing Vi and Annie. Vi has an armor reduction. Annie has a stun and a lot of AOE damage. Tibbers is a great for is it is just Tibbers is a great unit on this map because he sits and delays on towers like just it's amazing. You just sit there, you just walk them back and forth on the tower. They can't capture it. They have to kill Tibbers. If they start spending cooldowns on Tibbers, Annie goes and blows them up. It can get it can get a little bit yucky. The teams are Man Man's team on the left is Team Murka Murka, and the team on the right is called Butt Trumpet. Wow, the stream title tells me that. It's amazing! Wow! That's amazing. Alright, I can like, 
put this notepad document here that'll tell me and then I'll even know what to call the teams. Yay! I need to make my other notepad document that tells me what the points are called. I need to be in game before I do that. Uh, they are called the subway and the townhouses and Wayne Tower and um, wait. I what? know, I know Wayne Tower. Wayne Tower is the top one. Yes. And the subway and townhouses are the two bot ones, I think. I'm pretty sure. I don't, I don't remember know what, what the side ones are. Called. Yeah. Uh, we'll worry about that later. We're seeing Yorick and Ezreal locked in as well. Yorick. Yorick has been... Yorick's been a champion that's good in Dominion basically forever. It's like, since Dominion came out, Yorick has had really good sustain. He's been a solid bottom lane character. He's not nearly as popular or as bannable as he used to be, but he... He's a good champion, and Yorick is difficult to unseat from that bottom point, especially if anyone comes down to gank form because of Omen of Death. And Ezreal. Ezreal's a very safe ranged AD carry. He can do a lot of damage, and he has a gold map presence because of True Shot Barrage. Over on the other side, we're seeing the other half of the old bottom lane uh, combos. The two most powerful bottom lane champions for a long time were Yorick, as I mentioned, and this other one here, Urgot. Urgot, who can very safely harass the enemy because of Terror Capacitor. He can use Terror Capacitor, get that damage shield, approach the enemy very, very safely. He can even get hit in response to his harassment, but it doesn't bother him as much because of that damage shield. He also has pretty long range, as long as he can connect with that Noxian Corrosive Charge. If he doesn't cor connect with the Corrosive Charge, his range is, well, nothing to write home about. 425. Yes, it is quite low, unfortunately. But with that Corrosive Charge, it gets awesome. So, you do want to enjoy some of that skill shot use. And well, we're seeing Lux as well. His Acid Hunter range is longer than 425, but his base auto attack range is 425. Yeah, and it's the auto, the Acid Hunters that really can use to do your harassment, yeah, if not absolutely. your auto attack. And um, I think I can even get into this champions. No, I can't. Nope. It's okay, you can just turn on the stream or something. Yeah, I, I in fact have the stream on, but I was thinking maybe I could see the countdown in real time, as opposed to a five minute delay on the countdown. Oh no! And Urgot's, Urgot's passive is, guys, this is really underrated about Urgot, but just, I want you to look at that. It has the best name in the game, too. It's like, it's crazy long. Zon touched Bolt Augmenter. Yeah, it's pretty long. Yeah. This, this is hideously underrated about Urgot. Just look at that. Now, I want it's you to imagine really, him really hitting good. your entire team with just auto attacks, just like shooting people. Like what? This yeah, is what just, makes him so this is good so ugly. Carries. Like, yeah, guys, Urgot has one of the best passives for like bottom laning because oh man, just what do you do to overcome that damage? I mean, really, that's brutal. Fifteen percent. That's that's a lot. That's ugly. And we're seeing Lux. Lux is a great champion. Lux can sometimes be difficult to use, but she's a spammy git. She has super long range. Okay, no, she has like medium long range with Final Spark. Great for interrupting multiple targets. Great for picking off kills cross map. She has a lot of abilities that can hit multiple targets. She's amazing for delay. If you are playing Lux, God forbid someone hits you with a stun. That's not good times. Now, you can survive a lot with the wand, but unfortunately, Lux is very fragile. However, if you... Just hang back. You throw those skills into fights. You throw those skills on the towers. She can be one of the most annoying characters in this game mode. I would dare say, even more annoying than Nidalee. Because Nidalee can throw a spear, and then you know, hey, wait, that's, got, that's on cooldown for a few seconds. Lux can throw an ability, and you're like, well, she's got two more. I still can't safely approach this tower. I don't know. It's easier to chase down a Lux than it is to chase down a Nidalee. I'd say that's, that's also true. They both are really, really good. But Lux is just it's so like spammy. Two just of the five buttons. best ARAM champions. <laughs> Did you know that the team that consists formerly of members from Blind Pick Banditos, they play a bunch of ARAMs and their ELO is so high they have an hour queue time sometimes. I believe that. I it's I rough. was playing with a group of friends and we were trying super hard in ARAM for like the first three days and we got up to like. 35 and 5 as our record, and then we started getting like 7 to 10 minute queues, and I haven't played ARAM since. GG. Mm. Don't try hard in ARAMs. Don't do it. 
still on the stream, running the show, guys, so I can't quite answer anyone's uh, PMs at the moment because I'm only working off the one monitor today. Uh, if the quality is a little bit lower than you guys are used to, I'm sorry about that. I had to run a little bit of an experiment. So this is going to be 720p, 30 FPS for the show this week. Because What's the experiment? Well, I was going to do like some... I I feel like I'm having like frame rate issues that aren't actually displaying in the like in-game and exploit interfaces. So I want to do... I'm, I have I have video on 1080p 60. I have video on 1080p 30. So I need to get video on 720p 30 and video on 720p 60. I need to just look at those four videos because something's looking a little bit off on the 1080p 30 for some reason. The 1080p 60 looks great, but I don't know what it is. So I uh, interestingly, I'm getting an unknown error occurring. Uh oh. Well, do you know what that error is? Well, it told me that it was an unknown error. Oh, so you know it's unknown. Well, that's that's a that's the first important first step. Look so at I'm these. I'm gonna try to relog, and yeah, uh, I'll, I might be able to cast with you. I'll talk over the intro while you're doing that, and then I'll see you in uh, well whenever you get in the game. Um, this game, this can be round of sixteen. It is going to be Team Murka Murka versus Butt Trumpet. Team Murka Murka's team consisting of Jiffy Sticks playing as Jarvan the Fourth, Man Man playing as Vi. Empty DVD, empty DVD case you playing as Annie. You have load overlay, by the way. I no, I haven't. Up, I'm, I'm, I'm trying to click it. I have to. Uh, I was trying to fix the stream, the uh, the title overlay, without actually turning it on, so it didn't have to show up on it. But I guess I can't. You can't do that, yeah. Yeah, I just discovered that. I well, um, I can't actually spectate this game. You can't. Nope. You can't spec me? Nope. You can't spec... What? Why? That's not normal. Nope. It's not. I think that the host might have actually made it so that only people who are actually in the lobby could spectate. They should not do that. That's there's, true. I don't think there's actually a rule for that, but it's very polite um, that they don't do that. But if I can't cast this with you, then I could go eat something because I've been casting since 1pm nonstop. And I haven't actually eaten anything yet today. So well, hey, sure. You know what? Grab a snack. I can actually take a break. Hang yeah. out on the stream. Watch the game so you're still update, up to date on whatever happens. You know, going into the next game. That'll work. All right. So it sounds like it's not a an error on my end from what the stream is saying. So I will be back. Well, I will be here the entire time, but I'm gonna go hang up the call, and I will see you on the other end. Okay. Goodbye, friend. Goodbye. Fare thee well. Jelly tough. Okay. So I am going to... Well, when the call ended, it screwed everything up. Come on, computer. Play nice. Compu computer, please. Please, computer. Here we go. There we go. Ta-da! Okay. Oh, I tried to... Center my camera, but it didn't work. Alrighty. So as I was saying, Team Merka Merka, uh, empty DVD case playing as Annie. Uh, what? Wimsosaurus Hex playing as Lux, and I have Derpies playing as Urgot. Over on the other side, Team Butt Trumpet. We have um, Bassidae. Uh, no, Bassiate. Bassiate. Ba Bas ba Bastille Day. We have Baziate playing as Lee Sin. Uh, we have uh, Purdy's playing as Nidalee. We have Jeezy Shoemaker playing as York. We have uh, Chachi T playing as Ezreal. And we have Cardice playing as Darius. The game's to begin in just a moment. I am one out of one of your commentators for this game because for some reason Rheingold River was not able to join the game because we think we think it might have been closed to spectators. So she will be on for the later games in the event. So right now I am Gander of the Gaming Clan Lotto Clan, bringing this round of 16 game to you. This round of 16 game of the DominateDominion.com League of Legends Dominion Tournament number 71. Both teams heading up towards the top part of the map. 
I have official confirmation that Pezo and Child Support are not actually going to be able to compete this week. They had some people who were not able to show up due to uh, sudden schedule conflicts. So it'll be interesting to see who takes the tournament this week. A little bit of poke back and forth. Good poke on each side, actually. Ezreal and Nidalee over against Lux. Lisa Nibbles throws some poke out as well. So they could chip them off from this tower pretty handily if it goes on long enough. Okay. And Cardice, first one to fall here. Bat State taking the exhaust. Jiffy Sticks, your health is really, really low. Ezreal can see you. You're highlighted. Is going to be able to pick up the health relic and survive. Another important thing to note is that because of the... Like, J4 didn't die there. Ezreal's not going to get that bonus gold from getting the KB on him. And it also means that J4 gets to save his revive. So that's very, uh, very important to note that he still has that spell. Nidalee by herself approaching the tower. Doesn't Nidalee, you don't need to do that. You have spears. Just chuck spears. As Nidalee attacking a tower, if the enemy is in vision, all you have to do is chuck spears and harass them off the tower that way. That's all you need to do. You could slowly push mains into the tower while that's going on, too. Coming up from the bottom, Lux, J4, and Annie. And Ezreal is going to be the first one to fall. Uh, Pretty is going to die after that. Great wand from Lux, shielding every single person on the team. Leeson falls as well. And then there's the slam dunk on Darius. Follow up with a stun from Annie. And he is going to get the free trip back to the summoner platform. Leeson back alive once again is going to move over towards the drill, but it's Leeson versus the world. Is going to dive in on that, do a little bit of damage. Does not manage to tag J4, unfortunately. Offensive garrison used. Not entirely sure it was necessary. However, Lux with the final spark is going to do a lot of damage. Leeson tries to safeguard out, not able to escape, unfortunately. And Cardice is going to fall, and now Purdy's is having to retreat. And I didn't turn it on. Guys, the team names are at the top of the screen. Sorry for being a little bit late to the party on that. Now you can see who is playing there. Right up above the Nexus Health at the top. Ezreal, that true shot barrage not going anywhere, unfortunately. Uh, Derpies is going to swap positions with Yorick to do some damage to Ezreal in the process, but they are going to be able to turn that point around. They are now digging themselves out of that 5 cap that they were currently in, or pr were in beforehand. Yeah, well, well, Rusty, I am right there with you, man. What do? Uh, Bastet and Kartais moving on up towards the top, but Murka Murka hanging out in the middle of the map, watching them go by. Uh, team Murka Murka is a experienced Dominion team. They don't play uh, too often. Uh, they're off and on competitors. So they have a lot of experience over time here against a relatively new team. And oh dear, that damage! Lee Sin not once again not going to be able to safeguard away, unfortunately. Nidalee lands a little bit of poke in the process. And that's a lot of Nexus health damage for only being, what, three minutes in the game? That's absolutely brutal. Oh dear! That Nidalee poke. That Ezreal poke. Guys, you gotta get chipped down. You guys will get chipped out if you sit there and hold block. That is a thing that will happen. Jarvan the bomb lane looking to connect on Yorick. Is going to get it? Nope. He is not going to get it. Middle of the map, looks like Lux is going for the Storm Shield. Lux with the Storm Shield, pretty dangerous. Seeing just one, two bushwhacks on the map right now, not a lot more than that. Up at the top, Cardice engaged a pawn, takes some damage for his troubles. Another dunk by Vi, and those, these suppress from Assault and Battery has made it so that you just, you can't really do anything as Darius if you're suppressed. So you don't get that fight cleanup. Top point, neutralized, fighting over that. Nidalee poke does not connect, unfortunately. There's an exhaust on Nidalee, but there's really no follow-up to it, unfortunately. Her poke had already been used, and she was retreating. Annie wasn't going to be able to get that. Cataclysm goes down, takes out Ezreal, Leeson by himself up at the top. The point has managed to be captured. I don't think we'll be able to get it back. Safeguards to a minion, not going to be enough, unfortunately. The minion does survive driving standard, though, because of that. And the bottom lane? Well, it's Yorick and Urgot. Hmm. Looking around. Darius, Ezreal, over on this side of the map. 
seeing York with a tear. That's not something that we see very often used on York. Same for Urgot as well. But tear on York is something that's not very commonly used. Uh, Jelly Sticks moving up to the top, takes some damage in the process. Oh dear, that apprehend! Not able to escape. Noxus says, no, you are not allowed. J4 imbalanced fight now can brew up at the top part of the map. a little bit of poke connecting. And they are able to buy enough time for Jarvan to re-arrive at the top point. However, they're a little bit worse on health than they were before. You see them chugging through some pots. Slowly, the tower is being captured. Every time they feed one of those minions into it. Oh, the assault and battery straight through to Nidalee. Nidalee hops towards the enemy team. Not sure how I feel about that. Final spark shut down before it can connect. Dragon's raged out of his old cataclysm. Jarvan is able to get in close to Ezreal. And Annie has a stun ready. All she needs to do is get in range to land one incinerate. And they can take Ezreal down. Throwing Tibbers over there for vision. Because Tibbers gives vision. Very important thing to note. It looks like they're not going to go for it. It looks like they are just going to take this opportunity to recall and heal so they can get back to the top tower and be okay. Tibbers, no! Down the bottom lane. Well, this. The gank on Yorick. Yorick, using the Omen of Death, may still die. We will see. Just barely is going to be finished off, but with the Omen of Death, this is why Yorick is a very powerful bottom lane champion. He's able to use that, and because of it, he will have saved his tower. Top point has become neutral. Bassaday safeguards away. Still dies, unfortunately. Oh, wow, Annie. Lots of damage on Nidalee immediately. J4 picking up the KB there, and not going to get that third one, unfortunately. So he's going to turn around for the tower. Lux is looking around for Darius. She has her little wand thing. She's looking for an excuse. Throws the light binding, it does not connect. Throws the losing singularity to scout, doesn't find him. And now things are completely turned around in the bottom lane. Urgot went for that gank, York was able to turn around, starting to just drive minions into that tower. Throws down an omen on him, Lee Sin. Lee Sin wants to go for a gank here. I know, looks like he's just gonna babysit. Or is it gonna be a gank? Act actually going to be a gank down here against Urgot. Urgot pinned in an awful position is going to be defeated, unfortunately. Now Jarvan coming down here to bail out the tower. Urgot with that revive. One of the reasons why revive is so powerful, he's able to go down to this bottom point. J4, oh, the Cataclysm boxes them in. Lee Sin is able to escape through a minion, however, and he should be just fine. On this side of the map, things are a little bit different. Darius is defeated. Italy and Ezreal with the poke, and oh dear! That was unfortunate. And Ezreal picking up the double kill there. Annie with the stun. You delay them for just a moment. But with Lux, Lux having her final spark can easily interrupt. Maybe pick oh dear, please. Not quite enough damage for the freest triple. But still enough damage to get rid of them from capturing the tower. It looks like they are going to be able to get Nidalee. Potentially get Nidalee. Okay. And nope. Throws Lucid Singularity through, does not connect. Nidalee is just doing her cat hop. Annie, get her! There you go. Annie does not believe in cat. And in the bottom lane, with the action going on here, Lee said, oh dear, J4 able to escape. Over on the other side of the map, Chachi T, trying to arcane shift away. And it looks like they're going to be able to turn this around, and they are just driving like nail after nail into this game. Nidalee able to interrupt one person, throws down a bushwhack there as well. Blue team has captured the drill. And Jarvan, with the airborne, is going to interrupt on this tower. It looks like Urgot is going to head down towards the bottom lane. But they have control of the drill. And oh dear! The great escape! Did you see that? Maloko, write that down. 11-18 in round of 16. There's your highlight.
Maybe it's now to Sand that will have those written down. Either way. 11 minutes, 18 seconds in the round of 16 game. That was amazing. Lee Sin defeated. Or got in the bottom lane coming down for Yorick. And Yorick taking actually a lot of damage there as well. Excellent. Yeah, good job, guys. Making for making those uh want to make those clips, that's real cool. And uh, have Derpies is retreating back from the tower shoemaker with the omen of death. Derpies is gonna try and switch away. Buys himself a little bit more time because that extra damage from uh, that extra damage reduction from that Urgot passive. SS Trippy, I would have no idea. Looks like they're turning this point around here. They're assaulting the drill. Looks like they're going to swap points here on this map. Oh, nice light binding! Plus the exhaust, the exhaust lands before the pounce was made. Purdy's is going to have to retreat. Lee Sin safeguards through Nidalee to re-engage. Is going to get caught up by Light Binding, but Darius doesn't care about your Bolt and Shield. He has Noxian Guillotine. In the bottom lane, Urgot wants his tower back. Ezreal is there, and Ezreal is a little bit more mobile than Urgot is. And with the way that Urgot's being chipped down, Urgot's going to have to retreat or have someone come down to help him gank because he won't be able to win a straight up fight against Ezreal. Yorick now arriving at the bottom point as well. So two on two down here. Was able to connect with a couple of Acid Hunter. Ooh, one intercepted by Yorick. Now Urgot still has plenty of mana for the moment. And a little bit of a stalemate down here in this lower part of the map. Looks like there's good action is all in the upper part. Oh, the light binding dodge. Nidalee's cat form just jumping out of the way of that. And there's no... Oh, the assault battery! Now what? Nidalee's just going to hop away because that's what Nidalee does. Chasing Nidalee is almost as futile as chasing a singe. Good true shot barrage from Ezreal is going to interrupt on that tower light binding connects, but there's no one else to follow up on that, unfortunately. So they're being kept off that point for the time being. And this Yorick is just does not want to quit. He's doing everything he can. He's dead and he's still fighting. This is dedicated to the tower. New York doesn't have long left. Maybe another ability or two. Is going to be defeated. Flat tower. That tower is finally going to turn around. Up at the top. Oh dear. Nidalee able to connect with the spear against Annie. And the damage is going to get shut down by Darius from that Noxian guillotine. Throws another one on Man Man just for good measure. And is able to put a lot of hurt on him as well. Lux trying to keep Lee Sin away from this point. Red team has captured the and is she going to be able to catch him? Nope. Light binding dodged. Now, Urgot against Yorick in the bottom lane here. Looks like Yorick has no fear. He's going to jump in straight on him, put a lot of hurt on him. However, the Omen of Death is down. And oh, the True Shot Barrage really evens things up. Yorick sees this, is aware for it. Is he going to go for it? No. No, he's not. Oh, dear. Lux and J4 middle of the map. Jarvan is able to dash away. Empty DVDK is taking some damage. Looks like they want to move up to the upper part of the map. They do want to try and section off this Ezreal and defeat him. And oh, there's the Assault and Battery from Vi and Exhaust as well. His Arcane Shift has been used. Airborne, he has a couple more seconds before he can try to get away again. Is he going to be able to do it? Maybe. Nope. Lux happened. Able to pick him up with that final spark. Ezreal is going to be taken down. And now uh, Bassade is going to be defeated as well. Cataclysm in on Darius. Darius does not have an escape mechanic. Takes a lot of damage there in the process. Ezreal back with his revive. Is able to put a little bit of hurt on it. Oh, True Shot Barrage fired off as well. Uh, while this is going on at the drill, Ezreal... Oh dear, Ezreal with a defensive garrison on top of that. Ezreal came to play. He wants to absolutely stop this push from happening. To buy time for Nidalee to secure the refinery. And put them up at four capture points. And it looks like he is going to be able to do that. Ezreal, because of the revive, Ezreal was able to defend that point. If he did not have that spell, it would have been very, very easy for Team Merka Merka to pick that up. Center of the map, Annie and Lee Sin having a disagreement. Jarvan not going to be able to get there in time to save it. Maybe he'll pick up a kill on Lee? No, wants to get away from that Nidalee. And Jiffy Sticks, oh dear, has found Darius. And the last time those two champions met, it did not end very well. 
throw in a light binding, does not connect with anyone. Point is neutral. Murka Murka is working on turning it around. Two people capturing. Oh dear. Now watch out for that poke. The poke from Trumpet's team is just so powerful. Now this is going to be a pretty significant turnaround, but it's going to be a 300 point turnaround if they're able to keep this rolling, which is pretty awesome. So we'll see if they're able to pull it off. I was a little bit skeptical at first once they got once they finally got a hold of the windmill, but the pressure they've been able to apply on the map has been going in their favor pretty handily. Center of the map. Oh, and he interrupted by the true shop barrage. And light binding is going to connect. Apprehended in final spark. Still connects despite facing the complete opposite direction. I guess she clipped him with the back of the hitbox. Not entirely sure how that operates, but Darius is taken down. Top part of the map, Ezreal is going to be defeated. Empty DVD case! That was scary! Nidalee, that's a spear. You can't just go chucking those anywhere you want. You might hurt somebody. Throws one at J4 to get him away from the tower. Lee Sin on his way back up to the top. Trumpet has now gotten them below 200. Nexus Health is doing a pretty good job so far. Oh, Bushwhack on a health rock. That's dirty, Nidalee. Why would you do that? That's very unfriendly. In the bottom lane, Urgot and Yorick are having a little bit of a discussion. Again, Yorick has been defeated, but the Omen of Death is active, and it looks like he still doesn't have enough damage to be able to take down Urgot all the way. However, Darius has arrived, wants to connect with him and take him out, but I don't think he will be able to do so. Top point, J4 through the wall onto the tower, and gets Dragon's Rage back out through the wall that he came from, albeit on a different side of it. Ezreal with the Arcade Shift closes in on the side. Looks like he's going to go around for the Refinery. Lux does have her final spark, however, so it will not be too difficult for her to be able to stop that if she wants to. Could use the ult. Is going to use the ult. Ezreal is going to have to run away. And now Team Murka, Murka is in a very good position to bring this home. Ezreal is recalling. If they get a couple of good pickoffs here, then it can secure them the game. Annie revealing that she's by herself, but not really. It's Jarvin. It's Wooglitz. Actually, it's just Annie that picks up the KB. Looks like Jarvin knew that Annie had it, walked away. Lee Sin going for the refinery. They haven't realized it yet, but they know now. They should be able to see him on the map. Who's going to respond to that? Four people on this side, all chasing after Ezreal. Absolutely nobody dealing with Lee Sin. Lee Sin can do whatever he wants. They sweep Ezreal away from that point. They start taking the drill, and they're going to exchange these two towers. The bottom lane fight is going to be what matters here. Urgot has revived, is going to get back down to this point in order to keep it neutral. So it's 2-2 two two capture, 150-57 to 57 next health. Still in favor of Team Murka Murka, but Bud Trumpet doing a pretty good job of making their way back into this game from a pretty significant deficit. J4 is going to hang around. He wants to keep this tower under their control long enough for them to be able to pick up something else. Looks like they are able to sweep York away from the bottom point. And True Shot Barrage... Barely connects, does not hit the KB, unfortunately. So that buys a little bit more time. They were able to kill Jarvin, which is good for them. Defensive Garrison, though, that's going to make it last a little bit, a little while longer, which means they're going to be able to secure that three capture point at the same time that they lose this tower. So both characters in the bottom lane, with their uh, sustainability, very, very good to have. Now keep in mind, Yorick's passive is also powerful, much in the same way that Urgot's is. There you go. Every time Yorick summons something, more damage reduction. So he's running around with uh, damage reduction on himself, whereas Urgot reduces the enemy person's incoming damage. So they're very, very... the fights between them are low damage, and Urgot is not going to get here in time to stop this. Is going to be able to keep it neutral. True Shot Barrage comes down as well. Does connect. That's going to help out a lot in this engagement. There's the position reverse. The minions, the minions get a lot of capture in on that tower. Every one of those ghouls that goes up is just more for Yorick. Yorick pops the Omen of Death. Is going to be defeated. Ezreal joins the fight as well now and is able to pick up the KB Vi coming down. The minions, having had so much capture in, there was no hope of Vi being able to connect with Ezreal in time to be able to stop him from getting that. However, once again, they're trading for the drill. They're still up three points. Shut down. And Jiffy Stick by himself. Darius doesn't believe. 
in armor or MR. He's just not concerned at all. Lux is going to take this top tower. Darius is on his way to intercept. Darius has something to say about that. His axe would like to have a talk with you. Bottom point. Looks like they're doing a good job of getting that turned around. Vi is capturing it. True shot barrage fired off. Card ice. Low on health. Light binding. Oh dear, the poke from Nidalee. Lux has that shield. It can help her out a lot. What's she going to do? Defensive garrison. Oh, the final spark does not connect, unfortunately. Lux is going to be the hero of this top fight, however, because she was able to delay long enough for her ally Vi to arrive, and look at Vi helping her clean that fight up. Lux would not have been able to do it on her own, but she was able to delay for so long that reinforcements were able to arrive and defend that tower, and that is going to secure them the game. Good job, Lux. Good job. So that, that was a very good, uh, very good game, too. I really liked that. Butt Trumpet doing a very good job. Excellent showing in that particular game. And that, that was a round of 16 games. So we're going to go on to a round of 8 game. Coming up next here. Let's get and put up the in-game overlay here. And switch my screens around. Hopefully I click the light buttons this time. Whoa, man, so many people PMing me. Guys, I, guys, I can't, guys... Gandhi, please format screenshots how? Like, what do you mean, peoples? It's like, it's been the same screenshot format forever. You just use the... I can't even... words right now. Okay, it looks like game K is gonna be best. Oh, 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 oh. Oh, oh, oh. Hi. Hello, Ryan Gold River. Oh wow, okay, that was weird. I had the stream open still, and I forgot that I had the stream open still. So or you were like, it. hello. Whoa, what did I just do? Oh my god. Can goodness. you edit, undo it? Whatever it was? I don't know. Okay, let's take a look at the, uh, the post-game lobby here. Ta-da! Ezreal making use of that brand new item. Well, I assume really I'm supposed brand new. to take this invite. Uh, which one is it? Unicorns? Yes. Game K, LPO? This is MBT versus LPO? Yes, that's LPO. Which, by the way, guys, any of you guys, any, any VOD viewers out there, if you want to be a part of the live show, go to uh, twitch.tv slash dominategamingtv. You can hang out in the live chat with us here. We do this live. There's a live chat. You can post Franker Z's in it. And we're completely okay with that. Fun is allowed in the Dominate Gaming TV chat. So if you want to watch the broadcast live, it happens on Saturdays. And that is where you can follow it at. But let's finish looking at this post-game screen so we can get into the second one as soon as possible. Take a look at damage dealt to champions. See Urgot way out in front, followed up by Annie. Annie also way out in second. Like, whoa. Lee Sin not, not having too great of a day. Unfortunately, just only barely breaking into the five digits. And take a look at Graveyard Hero for that game. Graveyard Hero is the person who was dead the longest time spent dead. Yorick. But I would love to see what Yorick's time spent dead was, but minus Omen of Death. Like, how, how long is he really dead for? How long is he undead for? Maybe we should have a different coloration. And we are going to bring in this next game here. I feel like I was supposed to do something, but I don't remember anymore. 